Now, if we show the scopes, Command-7, I want to just work with the um, waveform monitor so we'll make it big enough that we can see what we're doing. Look what happens over here in the highlights as I move the highlight puck up. I make stuff brighter until it hits the maximum, which is 109%, and then it clips, gives us that flat line, and I've lost any white detail up here because I can't go any higher than that. It all turns into a mush at 109%. Most digital cameras are recording white levels this high, which makes them illegal. And notice how they're clipping, called blowing out, losing detail once it gets to a certain value. Notice how, as I move the highlights up and down, yes, the highlights are getting brighter, but the mids and the blacks are also changing because what I'm doing is I'm changing the angle of the line. I'm changing the relationship of every pixel to every other pixel. I'm making a, a common change. It's affecting the highlights more, but it's also affecting mids. It's also affecting shadows, just not as much. Look what happens as I do black levels. Again, it changes the angle of the entire line, and just as the whites will clip at the high end, the blacks will clip at the low end. But changing black level also affects mids, though not as much, and a little bit of the highlights. Changing the mids gives us a bubble effect. Notice how I'm raising the mids, but not affecting the blacks or the whites quite as much, lowering it. Has its greatest impact on the middle of the curve. Now that I've completely messed up all these settings, see this little hooky arrow up here? When you click it, it resets that panel in the filter back to its original setting. I could globally make changes by grabbing this line and dragging up and down. I don't find that at all helpful. I always make adjustments to black level, separate from white level, separate from mids, and we'll click the Go Back button to reset. On larger screens down here at the bottom, you're going to see numeric values, which you could use to type in a value. But when I'm doing color correction, I'm always using the puck, that's what this thing is called, and I'm always watching the scope to make sure that I'm getting the results that I want. Same kind of operation here is I'm adjusting color. This increases the highlights or decreases, increases or decreases the mids, changes the hue, changes the hue for shadows or for um, above and below. And then I've got a global setting. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Here, for instance, I've got this picture. Let's see if we've got a color corrector associated with it. I don't. So let's grab the color corrector, drag it on. Now, as I make a change to it, always go to exposure first. Look what happens as I pull the black levels down. Notice how they fall in the scope. Notice how this now becomes very, very difficult to see the individual boards that we could see earlier. We could clearly see the wood, though it was shadowed. But the more I pull this down, the more shadowed it becomes until now I'm losing detail. And this remains dark, but I can't see the individual boards. The blacks have been crushed, and you're not able to see the detail in the shadows. Or if we take a look at the sky, notice how here I can see detail in the clouds. As I push this up, they're getting brighter. And as I push this up, notice that I'm losing the detail, and now I can't see any of the clouds at all. When I lose detail in highlights, it's called blown out. When I lose detail in the shadows, it's called crushed. In both cases, I've lost the ability to see the clouds or... I've lost the ability to see the individual boards. I've turned this into a very high contrast picture where I'm blowing out the whites and I'm crushing the blacks to give us perhaps an artistic look. It's just that this exceeds broadcast spec. I can't have super whites and I can't have super blacks anywhere except the web. So let's just click here. And again, let's look at our blue ball as we move up. It'd be helpful if I actually select the clip and apply the filter. And now as I increase my grayscale or decrease it, but notice what's happening as I go to the vector scope. Notice how changing the grayscale also affects the color. Or here, changing the black level affects the color. Doesn't affect the hue, but it does affect the saturation. Or here, changing the grayscale. 
because changing grayscale affects the color, you always make your grayscale adjustments first, then make your color adjustments. I tend to do one, make it look perfect from an exposure point of view, then have it look perfect from a color point of view. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at color correction inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this webinar, please visit my store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for webinar 175. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash subscriptions. And thanks.